This is a video on voltage, current and resistance uh, as part of the Year 9 science course looking at um, physics, so the basics of electricity. So I'm going to start with um, the basics of electricity, the 101 of electricity if you wish. So we all know what electricity is. Okay, uh, It's basically, so it's something which flows through a wire, right? Um, but it's basically the flow of electrons. It's the flow of electrons. Okay, typically through a wire. So if I was to have a wire like this, it's defined as the flow of electrons. So electrons, they're negatively charged particles, if you recall. So going back to atoms, so atoms are the basic building blocks of matter. Matter is stuff, okay? Solid, solids, liquid, liquids, and gas. If I was to zoom into this hunk of um, a slab of metal, I would say that it'd be made of, uh, made of um, little sphere-like objects. Okay, these are atoms. So suppose this is a hunk of gold. Okay, it's made of gold atoms. And atoms are made of three basic parts. PEN is the acronym I use in my classes. PEN, P stands for proton. E stands for electron and N stands for neutron. So there are three particles which make up an atom. An atom is like a, it's not a correct way of um, defining atoms, but it's just a, a good visual way to think of them. They're like mini solar systems. So at the center of an atom, if you were to zoom in, you would see a nucleus. Okay, a nucleus is this incredibly dense, small region, and it's made of protons and neutrons. So for example, we've got the helium atom. Helium atom has got Two protons and two neutrons and two electrons. Okay, this is a helium atom. Okay, I'm not going to draw a gold atom. A gold atom is too big, too many particles. So a proton has a positive charge, P4 positive. An electron has a negative charge and a neutron has neutral charge or no charge. And atoms, they're typically neutral. Okay, the atoms that we encounter every single day, they're neutral. Right? Whenever you touch a table or a paper or something like that, you typically don't get zapped as you would if you rub your feet on, a, on carpet and you know touch a doorknob. Reason being um, is because so, so atoms are typically neutral because there's a balance. Think of a seesaw. There's a balance of positive and negative charges. Okay, so helium, for example, there's two protons and there's two electrons. Whenever you have a proton, a positive charge in an atom, you will always have a, a corresponding negative charge, an electron. So if an atom, let's say um, lithium. Lithium has three protons, and so therefore it's got three electrons to, okay, to balance out the positive protons. Okay, so positive and negative, they balance out, they cancel out, and you get a neutral atom. Okay, and it's got two neutrons as well in the nucleus. So this is called the nucleus. It's like the center. It's like the sun, if you wish, of the atom. And these two electrons here, you can think of them as like planets, okay? Electrons like planets orbiting the nucleus. Okay, so electrons... Flowing through a wire, so what is it? Um, more te technically speaking, if I was to zoom into, so let's take a wire, let's take a copper wire. Now, a copper wire is made of copper atoms, no surprises there. Okay, if you were to zoom in, you would see copper sphere, copper atom spheres like this. Okay, these are copper atoms. Now, the picture is more complicated than this, but it's just a nice simplified way of expressing this uh, visually. And so metals, like copper, involve what's called metallic bonding. What does that mean? That means that if I was to zoom into a copper wire, I would see um, these spheres of positive, overall positive charge. Let me explain. So a nu nucleus has an overall charge of uh, plus one, positive. Okay, it's positive. Why? Because you've got two protons in this case of the helium atom. And two neutrons. So two protons and you've got neutral, you just get positive overall, right? So therefore the nucleus, um, I, should, I should actually mention these are copper nuclei. The nucleus of any atom is positive overall. And you've got electrons which are free to roam around. This is metallic bonding. That, this is why metals can conduct electricity and even heat. Because the electrons are free to move. And um, a more te technical way of saying this in physics we call these electrons delocalized. These are delocalized electrons. They're free to flow. Okay, 
okay, and their collective movement when they move in one particular direction all together, that's called, so that's electricity, right? That's where you get electricity. Delocalized. Think of local as in your local supermarket. Local means it's nearby. Okay, um, a localized electron, for example, if I was to take a copper atom and I was to have, to have an electron there latched onto it, the electron will be localized. It's local, it's latched on. Um, if an electron is removed, it's now delocalized. It's free to move. So metals exhibit um, metallic bonding and this implies free electrons. Okay, this is the basics of uh, electricity, what it is. So let me now get into the nitty gritty of current voltage and uh, voltage current resistance. I'll start off with voltage. What is voltage? Well, you can think of voltage, voltage is like a force, uh, like a push given to electrons in a wire. Okay, so it's a measure of the amount of force, okay, or push, if you want to think of it that way, given to electrons in a, let's, let's make it more generalized, in a conductor. Okay, so voltage is basically the driving force that pushes the electric, so that pushes the, pushes the electrons um, through a conductor. Okay, it's like electrical pressure, just like water pressure in a pipe, voltage provides the energy needed for electrons to flow. Just think of it as like a hand. Here's a hand here, badly drawn hand. You've got electrons here in a wire. Okay, they're not really moving much. And then you give them a push and they start moving. That's voltage. Okay, and voltage is typically supplied by like a battery. Okay, if you look at a battery, it might say 1.2 volts. That's the... Um, measure of the amount of force that the battery can provide to push the electrons. And voltage is measured in units of volts. Okay, volts, given the symbol V, V for volts. It's actually named after the Italian physicist Alessandro Volta, okay, who invented the first battery. So that's voltage, measured in volts. Um, you've now got current. Current's a simple one. Current is basically just the The current is just the flow of electric charge. Flow of electric charge, typically electrons, electric charge through a conductor. Okay, think of like a, a lake or a river. If you have more water, you have more current. Okay, less water, less current. Right? Obviously, you're gonna you're, you're gonna be swimming in water that's got less current, right? It's it's safer. So it's just it's the flow of electric charge, flow of something through a conductor. Okay, it's a movement of electrons in a specific direction. And electric current is measured in units of amperes. Okay, also known as the amp for short, given the symbol A. Okay. Named after the Frenchman, the French physicist mathematician André Marie Ampère. And Ampère made um, lots of important contributions to the study of uh, electrical electromagnetism, okay, electricity and magnetism. And last but not least, we have resistance. Okay, resistance is a more of an intuitive one. Think about when you hear the word resistance, generally on the news, you, you typically see things like riots or protests, and that's that's pretty much the idea. Okay, it's like, it's basically an obstruction to the flow of current flowing through a conductor. Okay, it's the restriction of current. Okay, it's measured in units of ohms, named after the German physicist George Ohm. It's given the symbol, the Greek letter omega. It's like a pair of legs, capital omega. Okay, resistance. So if I was to have, let's say, here's a nice, here's a wire, here's a hypothetically all wires. There's no such thing as a 100% resistance-free wire. Okay, there's always going to be some resistance. So in this case, let's say there's zero resistance, hypothetically speaking. Suppose I put something in the way. Let's suppose I put some atom, a couple of atoms here. Electron, so the, the current flow will be a lot less, okay, than the current flow in this case here. Okay, so resistors, there are electric components and circuits called resistors. That, that's the symbol that they use, or this sometimes. Resistors are used in circuits to restrict current flow in order to ensure, um, to ensure safety reasons, okay, to prevent overheating of components in like light bulbs. So they're very useful. So that's where you would use re, um, resistance in circuits. And naturally, as I mentioned, in all conductors, like in copper wires, 
there's going to be resistance, natural resistance faced by electrons flowing through because electrons typically will bump into um, the nuclei, right? Nuclei of the copper atoms, let's say, or other atoms in the material. And that's the idea of voltage current resistance. Okay, there's three measurable properties of electricity.